everyone. Uh, so glad to have you back on and really excited about our guest that we have today. It is Rebecca and Josue Soto. Hey, Rebecca and Josue, Hi. so great to have you. Thank you so much. Hi, thank you so much for having us, Erin. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you Absolutely. so much. Absolutely. It's always great to be talking with another couple in real estate. Um, I don't think people really realize how um, impactful that can be to be a husband and wife in the in the business, but how tough but in rewarding it can be as well. So we're excited to talk to you all about that. So tell us a little bit about uh, yourselves and how you guys got into real estate. Okay, well, um, we got, let me see, before real estate, we were working completely different industries. Um, I was in dental, uh, the dental industry. Josh was uh, a truck driver and uh, we were looking for something that was going to be just a little bit more fulfilling, right? We wanted, we weren't happy with our careers. It paid well, right? Mm -hmm. um, but of course, we were putting a lot of extra time and effort into those jobs. And, um, and so we decided to do real estate together because we, in our experience of buying our home, uh, we enjoyed it so much. And we realized that that is something that really brought us pleasure to be able to help mm -hmm. other families, to be able to buy their first homes as well, or even investors to help them with making their investment purchases. And so um, we got into the industry back in about 2006 and our kids were small back then. And it just kind of afforded us the time mm -hmm to be able to, uh, you know, go to basketball and baseball and gymnastics and things like that so that we could be present for our family. So we were able to work and we were able to, to manage our schedule so that we could be there for our families. For sure. Very, very, very good. Anything, Josue, that you can add to that that you can think of? Well, I mean, yeah, just almost everything that she said, you know, we just honestly, when we decided to come into real estate, because we, we really, we truly believed in... Um, <laughs> working together and helping, helping each other kind of build this, this business, you know, and um, we always felt that I always personally felt that if I'm going to give myself 16, 18 hours to work for someone else, why not do it for us? Mm -hmm. exactly. And, uh, you know, like Rebecca mentioned, you know, I was, a, I was a semi driver and I would work, I would get up at three 30 in the morning and I wouldn't be home till like six, seven, eight o'clock at night. And long days, long days, and you know, I, she realized, like, you, you know, you, you're you have a college degree, you know, you have to, we have to figure this out, we have to figure out what's next for us. And mm -hmm. sure enough, man, you know, it worked out. It was it was a great decision. It was her idea, which I loved. So and um, and it was an amazing. I always say, women has the best idea, so that's why I follow her. <laughs> Smart. And, this is why this works. This oh, is why yeah, this works yeah. is because you recognize that right there. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, you have to really realize, you know, uh, you know, there's a purpose for everything. And she felt that it was something bigger for us. And um, yeah, you know, the same the same attitude that we took towards working for someone else, we took towards our business, Aaron, you know, I love it. I love it. What would you say? And you guys both might have a little bit of a different one. But what would you say is your why? We'll start with you, Rebecca. What's your what is your why? You know, I I think in in uh the why always kind of changes a little bit mm -hmm. in the beginning. Oh my gosh. Sorry about the dog. Don't you worry about it. I've got mine upstairs with my husband. <laughs> so don't worry about it. Yes. Um, so, you know, in the beginning, it was really to be able to provide a lifestyle for our family mm -hmm. that we would all enjoy together. And of course, affording more time to be there with them. And um, I'll, I'll be honest, before um, before real estate, before we made that change, I remember having an issue at a job that I had been working for five years. And I remember having requested some time off and it was literally just like uh, an extended weekend to be available for a, a um, a celebration of, for our family, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and they told me no. And I thought, wait a minute, you're, you're telling me no, I can't be there. And, I, and when I really started thinking about it, I was like, this is a really important milestone in our family. And I can't be there because my job says I can't be there. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been there five years. I've never really asked for a lot of time off or anything right. like that. And I just thought, you know what? They don't own me. <laughs> they mm -hmm. don't own me. I choose to come in here and I need to rethink that, you mm -hmm. know? And so it's, it's part of the reason why I made my decision so that, um, you know, that I could 
be empowered to be able to take charge of that and not have to worry about someone else telling me that I can't be there for my family. So mm -hmm. it was it was a big deal for me at the time. And I remembered I, I literally quit that job. I quit mm -hmm. that job. And I'm going full time in real estate because this this can't happen. No one's no one's going to tell me what to do like that. You know, no, definitely <laughs> not. Definitely not. Following schedules and things, but that was a big deal for me, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that, yeah, same here. I mean, I have almost I had almost the same situation back in 2007. You know, it's like, you know, I realized that at that moment when all this occurred, that this the situation that I had, I realized that and we were about probably about a year into mm -hmm. to real estate, right? And mm -hmm. I was doing it, I was still having my full-time job. And, Re and Rebecca was working, working the business while I was still, you know, she was full-time real estate while I was right. still working. My, and, you know, something occurred that evening and I had to be at my, our daughter's uh, Sweet 15 photo shoot, which was important to me. It was about an hour away. I'm trying to get out of work early and mm -hmm. sure enough, my boss like, no, you can, you can, you can. And I was like, what? You know? So I realized, you know what? I'm not going to wait another year. This is my move. This is my sign. And honestly, that was the last day I ever worked for that company again. I never looked back. And it's been 14 years now. Mm -hmm. And the best choice of our life. The best choice ever. <laughs> Absolutely. But the root of it is, is really just being there for our family yeah. and being able to provide them a lifestyle and all the things without having to worry about you know, you know, like if, if our jobs wouldn't let us have, you know, those that time off that we need, that precious time. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's that's basically it. Basically. And fine, you know, and what else was good about this, uh, our business, uh, Aaron, is that, you know, when you're seeking one of the things that, like Rebecca said, when you're seeking your why, your, your why can be very wide open, you know, mm -hmm. but one of for us, it was very important that our family was always first, you know, mm -hmm. well, I tell you, there's God first, us, and then family, you know, always. Mm -hmm. And it, it had to be aligned with our core values. And always, I always say that, that, you know what, well, what, I, what I'm more passionate about, my why may not be the same as yours, you know, right. so keep that in mind. And, you know, and financial freedom, man, you know, we, we've learned that even through our darkest and hardest times in real estate, man, we never gave up. We knew that there was always something bigger in the other side. And, the, you know, and... You know, till this day, you know, I tell my agents and we tell our team members, you know what? Just keep fighting through it. You'll be surprised when you fight through it. Everything is going to work out at the end. You know, so I always tell everyone, dig deep, man. It's more than what you see it is. Absolutely. And you you really, Josue, you really hit the, the nail on the head there um, and telling agents that it's not always going to be easy and there are going to be some really dark, horrible times. Do you necessarily ever want to go back there? Of course not. But it's during those times that you really shape yourself. And that really good advice that I got from an old broker that said, this is one of the hardest times during the Great Recession. This is one of the hardest markets I've ever seen. And it may not seem like it right now. But if you can stick with it during this time, I promise you, it might not seem like it. But people are watching. People are watching. And if you can get through it and you can stick through it and it shows that you have that, that grit and that you can dig deep, that means you're going to dig deep for them. And it's amazing if you can stick with it, what will come of it. And and he was very right. And I love, uh, that. I love that you touched on that, Aaron, because that's exactly how it should be. You know, when Rebecca and I came into the business, it was almost 15, 16 years ago, 15 and a half now. Remember what happened in 2006, 7, 8, the market crashed. And y'all so, are in Florida. So yeah, in Florida, if I know what you're yeah. talking about, I yeah. know you guys know what you're talking about. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, we've seen it all, man, Aaron, honestly. So, so to us, even... When all this occurred with COVID and everything, I was we were never shook. We we we've experienced all the market already, the bad. I mean, mm -hmm. and even our team members, we just looked at our team members and said, we just got to keep moving forward. Exactly. We had, we had one of the biggest years in our career last year, you know, and still moving forward. And our team members are still loving and growing and and seeing the vision of everything. And they were like, wow, man, you know, it was if it wasn't because of you guys, positive energy and just keep moving forward. You you can't. You can't let that, you know, when you experience something that bad, nothing phases you. You just got to nope. keep moving forward, you nope. know? You're so. able to recognize that there's things that come at you, like a pandemic. We didn't know what to do about it, but you were like, anything is better than what <laughs> that time was, you yeah. know, going on. Yeah, right. <laughs> we can do this. We can do anything. I might, my arm might be hanging off and I'm like, I'm here, but it's all good. It's great. So talk to, to everyone about, 
what it means to you guys about being married in real estate and how the two of you guys make it work. So married in real estate, and that's real, that is the title of our book that we recently wrote during the pandemic. And it really is just kind of outlining our, our journey our career in real estate together. And we go through, you know, from the time that we met to the crash of 08, almost losing it all and uh, and kind of and bouncing back from that. And mm-hmm. so, you know, I think there's a lot that we can learn when we when we look at other people's journeys. And um, and so I think there's a lot there for others to in, to enjoy and be able to learn from as well. So uh, the book is available uh, for anyone who would like it. It's for free right now at MeridanRealEstate.com. So only for a limited time, though, they'll be they'll be moving it out of there. So if you want a copy, just go ahead and, and go out to the website now. And, um, but there's exercises and life lessons that I think will be helpful for just your everyday, right? You know, everyone's looking for peace and balance and you know, self-care and all this stuff. And so we, we touch on all those subjects in the book. Yeah. And there's also a course, we, we created our first course, you know, so that's good. Mm-hmm. Oh, good. I'll definitely look into that for sure. Thank you. Um, I'll start with you, Josue. What would your adolescent self not recognize about you today? Oh wow! Wow, that's a that's a great question. <laughs> um, I don't think I I would have re- really thought that I would um, I would be in the leadership role that I'm in right now. Mm-hmm. I always felt that I was a leader, mm-hmm. but I never thought that it would it would it would be at the level that we're at right now. You know, sometimes you know you have this imposter syndrome that you don't really you know that in your heart that you're ready for it, but you you know you always self doubt yourself. Mm-hmm. I would say that's one of them. You know, and as far as um, even the leader in real estate, you know, our team leader, you know, just just the way we, you know. One of the things I always said to myself was I always wanted to, I was very self-independent since I was a young man. You know, I was, mm-hmm. I was told my parents I wanted to own uh, my own sneaker store at a very young age. Sure. So I always, I always felt that I wanted to be just self-employed, a business owner. A business mm-hmm. owner. Mm-hmm. So, you know, now that I look back in my mind, personally, my mom reminded me of this about a couple of months ago. She said, you remember when you drew, you even drew your logo and everything? I was like, wow, she remembered that, you know, <laughs> but you know, I think that that's, that's something that always resonated in them as parents, you know, and then I never thought about it and I forgot about it. And they remember, mm-hmm. I guess they see that in us and Rebecca and I now, and it's not, this, and I can't take the credit on my own. You know, this is something that we did together, but right. me personally, yeah, I would say that. I would say that. I think, you know, surrounding myself with, um, and having these opportunities to surround myself with, with big leaders and our industry leaders and, and other leaders within our industry and just sitting there and pulling up that chair, that chair to the table and learning from them. Mm-hmm. That was a chance that we, we rolled the dices on, I say, you know, and the opportunities. Mm-hmm. When the opportunities were there, we, we never let that door close on us, you know. We walked right, right through it. So I would recommend that. For sure. How about you, Rebecca? What would your adolescent self not recognize about? Rebecca today. Hmm. So hard on that one. I'm, I was thinking about it, right? Um, I think, I think like my younger self saw my, saw me being a teacher. And, uh, but as I got older, I realized that like teaching for the school system, although it's a beautiful thing, yes. it's not something that I wanted to do. I mean, it's amazing. And I, and I, I honor all those teachers out there. Um, they do a wonderful job, but, um, but that's not necessarily the route that I wanted to go as I got older. And um, but you still have that desire to, um, to teach, like it's kind of in you. And so I, I couldn't see how else I could do that. So I think, um, I think, this is a beautiful transition because as I've become a real estate agent, I'm now leading and teaching uh, team members and, and other people and mentoring others out. And uh, so I think that is something that I've, I don't think I could have seen that when I was younger. I didn't, I didn't have that, that vision to see how else I could apply that. Yeah, she does a phenomenal job at it, honestly. Oh, I, mean, I, can, I can tell. I, I can tell you this right now. My team members love me, but they love mama. <laughs> I can tell. I can I can feel it. Without even meeting everyone, I can just I can feel the energy and I can tell it for sure. For sure. 
<laughs> how does uh, being a part of EXP and the Honey Badger Nation, how does that make you guys feel? Oh, man. I love it because it's a community within a community, right? And yes, so within EXP, we have 55,000 agents. We don't all know each other, yet there is this sub-community of agents who said, you know what, we're going to help each other out. And so um, we, we have this private Facebook group page. We're all connected. Um, you can reach out to anybody for help. Um, meet others to put on your podcast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and and of course there's a lot of sharing of information as well so i love all the lives that are done within their um, john kitchens and everyone else who's mm -hmm. coaching and um and just kind of uh, spreading that uh, that to just help each other grow right i think it's a wonderful thing that has inspired other organizations within the organization to keep blossoming yeah. and growing and spreading. And so I, I think it's just, I think it's an amazing thing. And I'm very proud to be a honey badger. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I start off with, I'm very proud and blessed to be part of the honey badger nation. Um, but, but to me, it's more of the, like Rebecca says, the collaboration. Yes. You know, here we are. We're stronger together. You know, right? We're stronger together. Mm -hmm. We grow together. We don't leave each other behind. You know what? If we need something, we, we have we have a community to reach out and ask these questions and see, hey, what's working for you? What's not working for you? Can, can we get on a call? Can we get on the Zoom? You know, when we were independent, we never had that. So exactly. to us, So to us, to have this small independent brokerage and had this whole entire family of over, I think it's, I think we're at over 5,000 in Honey Badger right now. I can't remember, mm -hmm. the number, but I think it's over 5,000. And then we have the Global Alliance, which that's close to 2,000 right now. So now we have this massive community of fam, you know, a family that I don't even consider them like partners of mine. I consider them all our fam extended family, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's amazing, man. You know, and it's just the coaching, like Rebecca said, the, the leaders that we have and, and just, just, it, it, I can go on and on with this question, honestly, it's, but it's, it's a blessing. It's awesome. And I think that that is the, you've just, you've said it again, that um, it's an amazing thing that collaboration and not feeling like you're alone. You guys are independent mm -hmm. people. You've had your own independent brokerage. I'm sure you had wonderful working relationships with agents and probably still have those wonderful working relationships, but there's something about um, that, that loneliness and always feeling like it's on you and you've got to figure everything out and you feel like you always have to reinvent the wheel every single year. You've had a great year. Now you're back on, you're like, huh, time to reinvent yeah. us ourselves again. And to be with this group of people that truly are collaborating with you and you, and you, at first you're kind of like, I asked a question. I didn't really expect you to give me all your trade secrets, but everybody just wants to share because that is this beautiful network that we're a part of because it's like you succeed everyone succeeds because we're all I'm glad you said that, Aaron. Together. I, was, I was about to say that that was another thing I'm, I'm, one of the parts that we miss when you're able to surround yourself with individuals that they think bigger of you than what you think of yourself you know yes. you know we've been able we, we Rebecca and I we've been we've had time to spend with uh with Jay and Michael and John and, and Jeff and for them just to really see you for more sometimes than what you see yourself. Yes. And then, they're like, no, man, you know what? You need to be doing this. You need to push yourself a little, Sam. Mm -hmm. I, and I'll tell you a story real quick. Yes, um, no, we were please. Rico, we were in Puerto Rico and we had just wrote our book. It was out probably a couple months. And of course, Michael and Jay were so happy. And they're like, oh my God, here comes the sodas. We spent some time with them, man. I sat down with, with, on the, at the table with Michael and Veronica and a couple of us. And he looked right at me. He was like, so what's next for you guys? And I'm like, well, well, yeah, you know, we got this, this, and this. He goes, no, what's next? What is next for your book? You know, you wrote the book, congratulations. So what's next? What's right. next for the Sotos? And he says, you never close your eyes and act like you're done. You're never done. You got to think about your next plan. What's next? And, you know, I respect him because he's so honest about it. And how can I respect someone that and thinks pushing, that way? You're pushing you, know? you to think bigger to keep going. And he quickly said, I need you to contact this person. I need you to contact this person. And this is your next move. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. You know, mm -hmm. I, I just sat there to talk about, see how they were doing. I didn't expect right. it to be a <laughs> like, Can I take a breath for a moment? But it's like, yeah, no, yeah. no. keep but on thinking bigger this. Yeah, but that's who they are, Aaron. You know, they're going to be able. They're they're going to be able to be there for you even when you when you least expect it. You know. Mm -hmm. so.
It's that's amazing. And, and I, I love that. So obviously you guys have had some great success up to this point. What would you say is important to both of you at this time in your careers and your lives? How has it changed? What's important? What's important for us? So as we continue to um, kind of build our team um, and attracting into the organization and all and growing, growing that, um, it's really the main focus has been in collaborating with our team members, helping them grow, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and I think that's, um, to me, being able to be there for them and help them grow is more satisfying to me to see that growth in them, but we're all growing together. We just yeah. continue growing. So to me, and it kind of goes with that, that heart of teaching. It's like when you're doing what you love, you never feel like you're working, right? You'll never work another. Mm -hmm. And so that I think has been the thing for me. And I know that it is for, for Josh as well. Yeah. So, um, you know, we, we're still in production mm -hmm. and we're still taking time aside to grow our team and to be able to build them up as well. So mm -hmm. I, I love that legacy that we're leaving with them. Yeah, I think, you know, I love the uh, the approach that Rebecca and I, because she just answered it, honestly. Mm -hmm. And she said, I'm pretty sure he has the same approach. And that's our approach. Our approach is to continue, continue building leaders our partners, making sure that they understand that we're here for them with whatever they need. And most importantly, man, leaving a legacy, not only for them, but for the community of our family. You know, sure. that's, you know, they ask, you want to talk about a why? And then that's your why right there. That you, you know, it's not, someone said something the other day that made a lot of sense. You can have everything in the world, but you can't take that with you. They can't. But, but who you are, is who they're going to remember you by. So... That's, sure. that's that's who we are, you know? That's our legacy. We give your best. Mm -hmm. I love it. Thank you guys so much for your time. I appreciate it more than you know. Please go and enjoy your evening. Play with your puppy dog. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm looking forward to actually getting a chance to meet you guys in the real near future. Oh, absolutely. Thank Aaron. you. We Thank look you forward so to meeting much, you Aaron. as well, Aaron. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. Bye -bye. Have a good night. Bye-bye.